part four, in which we're still discussing the juicy bits. Ever since learning about them while watching the miniseries *Cad File* as a teenager, I have hated the concept of religious relics. It's probably my Mormon upbringing, but、uh, my aversion and distaste for relics was cemented by my first trip to Germany. I was not impressed. So, learning about the relics of Christ's body, including a holy foreskin, was interesting. Apparently, somehow it ended up being put into the alabaster box with spikenard in it, with which Jesus's feet were anointed by the woman who cried and washed his feet with her tears, just to make sure that her horish aura did not infect that holy oil. Then we move on in history to find out about women who believed that the holy prepuce was their wedding ring. Then I learned about art, where the dead Jesus is on his mother's lap, but everything on him isn't dead or limp. And then chapter eight, where we get into Ashera and the abusive asshole that is the God of the Bible. I learned about why women originally veiled their faces. You want to hear this one? Have you ever heard of the Watchers? In the Book of Enoch, they came down from heaven. They were like angels of God, and they did the nasty with women on the earth, the daughters of men. Well, that's why women have to veil themselves so that more watchers won't come down and want them. This is the beginnings of purity culture. And while it was bad for the watchers to do that, apparently it wasn't bad for El to do the same thing. Scholars suggest that the first daughter that he had relations with wasn't Mary. It was Eve, and there's a figurative third wife of El, Israel herself, and I found that account extremely triggering. Here we have a winter summer relationship with an uneven power dynamic, where a narcissistic pedo commits incest with his foster daughter. That sounds an awful lot like Joseph Smith, and it is she, Israel. Who becomes the victim of all the rage of deity for the crime of him not being able to control her own sexual creative powers? It seems like the more things change, the more things stay the same, and this is the same story that's been told since the beginning of time. It almost seems like the Bible prepares women to be victimized within the patriarchy that it upholds and excuses.